All right, as well as you hope you're well. Welcome to another update, uh, Lockdown Edition. And in this video, I'm going to show you something very interesting on this chart behind me, which, by the way, I'm going to show you a pattern that is guaranteed to happen on the markets. All right, guys, let's get back to our chart. And this is the chart I want to show you here. This is the chart of the S&P 500. And it's actually a very important one I want to show you here because there's a pattern here on this chart that is almost guaranteed to repeat itself, guaranteed to happen in the very near future. So as you've seen, the stock markets have been dropping over the last few weeks, the month of March, probably one of the worst periods of the stock market, uh, which some have compared to the 1929 Wall Street crash. But notice what's happened here. As the market has dropped, as you'll see here, it's also left some interesting clues. These are what we call gaps in the market. All right, guys? So notice as this market has been dropping, it's also left a series of gaps. So let's just come closer and show you this, as you can see here. Uh, here's one gap right here, as you can see right there between the uh, 2900 and 3000 level here in the S&P is one gap right there. There's another gap right here. There's another gap right here about the 2700, 2800 levels here, as you can see. That gap has not yet been filled, by the way. There's a gap right here, very obvious gap about the 3300 uh, level right there, as you can see. That gap has also uh, not yet been filled. So there are several gaps, as you can see here, guys, there's several gaps on the chart, the S&P, that have not been filled. And again, these are the more sort of immediate ones right here, the more immediate ones about the 2700 to the 2900 and the 3000 levels on the S&P. These gaps have been left unfilled. And by the way, these are what we call gap downs, or I guess gap downs. A gap down usually forms when a market is declining. However, look over here, this is a gap up. So this over here, the one that formed very recently in the month of March, it's about a 2,300 level here on the S&P. That's a gap up. By the way, it's quite interesting that today, as I'm making this video, we have a gap down, a gap down situation. Now you could be thinking at this point, what's the point, what's the deal about all these gaps? What does it matter? So what? Here's the fact. In the entire history of the stock market, there has never been a gap, a gap down, that has been left unfilled. In the entire history of the stock market, all gap downs, like the ones you're seeing here on the way down, they've always been filled. In other words, the market eventually has gone back up and filled, filled those gaps. So that's essentially what we mean by gap fill. On the other hand, a gap up, like the one you see here, when the market opens higher than it closed the previous day, a gap up don't always get filled. They don't usually get filled. But gap downs, they do, they do usually get filled. They have a higher probability of getting filled eventually. So the bottom line to remember about all of this is that when you see a gap down situation in the market, it can actually give you a sort of a directional bias in, in, a, in the sense that uh, you know eventually the market's going to go back and fill those gaps. Now, we don't know when these gaps are going to get filled. We know they will get filled eventually. I mean, there's a high probability, I would say, almost a guarantee that these gaps are going to get filled, these gap downs. The question is not if, but when. It could be a few weeks, could be a few, uh, could be potentially a few months. It could be a few years. Uh, I personally think, uh, my, my actual estimation is that these gap downs are going to get filled by the end of the year. And actually, perhaps by October of this year, we'll see these gap downs. All these gap downs you see here on the way down, I think we'll see them filled by the end uh, of October, uh, if not by the end of the year. So just remember, a gap down is not the same thing as a gap up. Gap up, like you see here, they don't always get filled. Like, for example, in 2016, after the Brexit vote, a few days after the Brexit vote, the market gapped up. That gap has yet not been filled, even though it formed, uh, again, some years ago. Um, and again, the bottom line that I appreciate about all of this is that uh, when you see gaps like this forming on the chart, mark them on the chart, because eventually when the market comes close, when the market comes close to those gaps, it could go back and actually fill those gaps. By the way, one important thing to mention is this. Not all gaps across all markets are equal. A lot of people think that gaps on the stock market are the same thing as gaps on Bitcoin or individual stocks. Not true. Gaps on the stock markets, especially on the indices like the S&P and the Dow, they have a much higher probability of filling than gaps on Bitcoin or individual stocks. They're not all equal. So this is a mistake a lot of people make. Uh, they assume, I see a lot of people making this mistake. They think that a gap on a Bitcoin chart has about the same probability of filling as a gap on the S&P chart. Not true. Same thing goes with gaps on uh, stock charts. So on individual stocks, like let's say stocks of Apple or uh, Facebook or some other stock, they don't have a high probability of filling as they do on the stock markets. So remember, the stock market gaps, the gaps like you see here on the S&P, they have a much higher probability of filling than the gaps you see on other 
uh, markets. By the way, guys, we also have a death cross on the charts here. A death cross just occurred recently on the charts. We're going to cover that plus a lot more in tomorrow's member video update on Thursday's members video. So we're going to cover Bitcoin, stock markets, currencies, gold as well. 